This mahogany Adirondack chair probably looks like many others you've seen before or even built yourself. But what sets this one apart is by loosening four knobs, lowering the seat, lifting the back and rotating it forward, you can fold this chair up for convenient storage. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build one of these chairs. Rockler is also going to be selling the published plans, a set of templates for making the curved parts, and a hardware kit. And you'll be able to get that at rockler.com. We're going to start the process by building the seat assembly. So cut a couple of blanks for these back legs from inch and a half thick stock. Trace Rockler's back leg template onto one of the leg blanks. Then cut out the leg and sand the cut edges flat and smooth. Now I'll go ahead and trace the first leg onto the second leg blank and then cut it to rough shape just outside your layout lines. Then Attach the two legs together face to face with double sided tape. Trim the second leg to match the first leg using a long bearing guided flush trim bit in your handheld router or on a router table. And now we're going to mark both back legs for these through bolt holes right here which attach the front legs and allow the parts to pivot. When you drill these 5 16 inch diameter bolt holes, do it at a drill press if you have one so the holes will be square to the leg faces. Next up, we're heading over to the table saw to cut dados on the back legs for these three parts. A rear seat stretcher, these backrest pivots, and these backrest stops. Now I've got one of the legs dadoed here already, so we can take a closer look. This whole dadoed area is six inches wide, and I start by cutting it all a quarter of an inch deep. Then I raise my blade to three quarters of an inch to cut this three inch wide center dado. I make all of these dado cuts with my work pieces held against a long stiff scrap fence attached to my saw's miter gauge for stability. And I keep this bottom seat portion of the legs against the fence for all of these cuts. And the reason why I do that is that will keep all of these dados square to this front bottom edge. And it also explains why I've got pieces of masking tape with arrows applied to each of my work pieces to remind myself of which of these two bottom edges needs to stay against that fence. When the dadoing is finished, file or sand the sharp back corners of the legs round, ease their long sharp edges, and finish sand the legs to 180 grit. And now we can go ahead and connect the two back legs with a couple of seat stretchers. There's a wider one back here that fits into the frontmost dados we just cut in the back legs and this one right here. So go ahead and make up these parts. Then fasten the legs to the two stretchers with pairs of 3 inch counterboard exterior screws to form the seat framework. Install the rear seat stretcher in the narrow frontmost leg dados. We're going to fill the other wide and narrow dados on the back legs with these two parts, a backrest pivot and a backrest stop. These backrest pivots have this four and a half inch wide lapped area milled three quarters of an inch deep into their outside faces. And that enables these pivots to install flush with the outside faces of the legs, like this. Cut these laps on a bandsaw with a wide dado blade or a straight bit in the router table. Now cut the top ends of the pivots into inch and a half radii and smooth the curves. Then bore a 7 8 inch diameter counterbore 3 8 of an inch deep into the outside face of each pivot at the center point of the curves you just cut, followed by a 5 16 inch bolt hole centered in the counterbore. So go ahead and sand these backrest pivots smooth and ease their sharp edges and then install them like I'm doing here with some waterproof wood glue and four counterboard screws. Then make up these backrest stops and install them in their dados so the top rounded end is flush with the tops of the legs. We can wrap up work on our seat base by installing these seat slats. But before we do that, there's a couple of things I want to point out about them. So let's take a closer look. As you can see here, I first rounded over the corners of all of my slats and then knocked off all of these sharp edges with a quarter inch roundover bit in my router and that of course will help prevent splinters. 
I also drilled these pairs of screw pilot holes at my drill press first before installing the slats so I could keep these screw patterns evenly spaced and straight. Counterbore these holes so you can cover the screw heads with wood plugs. To install them, butt the rearmost slat against the backrest pivots and space the slats about 5 16 of an inch apart. Some dowels or wood scraps can make this easy to do. Then extend the screw pilot holes from the slats into the legs and fasten the slats with 2 inch exterior screws. That takes care of the seat portion of this project. So now we can move on to the fold down backrest. And to get that process started, we're going to need a couple of long backrest supports. So make up blanks for those parts now. Now these backrest supports are going to need centered slots along the bottom ends so the backrest can move up or down like this for setting up or folding down the chair. And to cut those slots, we're going to do that at the router table with a 5 16 inch diameter straight or spiral bit. Now I've got my router table set up here to make these slot cuts and I've marked the cutting limits of my bit on the router table with a piece of tape. Now I've already cut one of the slots on these backrest supports so I can show you what we're doing and clearly it's a centered slot and it also goes all the way through the workpiece. Now these backrest supports are pretty thick at an inch and a half but you don't need an overly long bit to make these cuts. Here's the trick. For each bit height setting, make two passes instead of just one, flipping the workpiece end for end and keeping the same edge against the fence. This way, you can cut the slots in from both faces to speed the process along. But remember, make sure to keep the same edge against the fence. So as long as your bit can cut at least halfway through the thickness of the workpiece, you can cut these centered slots without an overly long bit. This is also a good time to drill a bolt hole in each support for attaching the back ends of the arms later. Complete the supports by rounding their bottom corners with 5 8 inch radii to provide clearance for pivoting. The backrest of the chair also requires these two horizontal cross pieces and they're curved along this front edge to make the back of the chair more comfortable to lean against. So make up one and then template route the second to match it just like you did the back legs. Here at the bench I've got the backrest framework clamped together so that I can test its fit on the seat assembly. You want this framework to slide down between the pivots on the seat without binding. If the fit is too tight, cut these cross pieces a little bit shorter, clamp it up and try to fit again. When the framework fits correctly, Finish sand the parts and fasten the cross pieces between the supports with 3 inch long counterboard exterior screws. With this seat back framework assembled, now we can go on to making these back slats. And as you can see, there are two narrow ones on the outside and five wider ones in between. So go ahead and make up blanks for them all and cut the top ends of these narrower slats round. Now the wider slats share a 10 inch radius and here's how to lay that out. Here I've got all seven slats clamped together and up against this clamped flat scrap to keep the bottom ends lined up. I've installed a quarter inch spacers between all the slats and I've drawn a center line down my middle slat with a pivot point 10 inches from one end. That way I can use a large compass or these trammel points set for 10 inches to draw that curve. Cut the slat curves at the bandsaw, then ease their sharp corners. Round over the front edges to prevent splinters and sand them smooth. And now you can see that I've got all of the back slats ready to install on the backrest framework. And I've got my quarter inch spacers inserted in between each of them to keep them evenly spaced. I've drawn a couple of layout lines here and here so that all of my attachment screws will be centered on the top and bottom cross pieces and I've pre-drilled my counter bores for the installation screws. I've also got a couple of scrap spacers clamped together down here to keep all of the slats lined up along their bottom edge. And if you have a pin nailer or brad nailer, I found it helpful to tack these slats in place first to keep them from moving around as you're driving the attachment screws. Fasten the slats with two inch exterior screws. 
Notice that the hole positions are offset on the narrow slats in order to avoid the screw locations where the backrest supports and cross pieces connect. Well, we're making great progress on this chair project and there's just a few more parts to make before it's ready for final assembly and finishing. So next up, the front legs. Now notice here, they have a centered slot near the bottom end so the seat can move up or down during setup. So go ahead and route these slots just like you did for the backrest supports. Here I've got one of the front legs already completed so I can point out a couple of the important details. And the first one is this, this 3 quarter inch diameter counterbore right here. This counterbore is actually a safety feature. It locks these knobs from Rockler into the top of the slot so the seat can't fall down if the knob loosens up a little bit. If these were just slots, all that would hold the seat up would be knob and bolt tension. But this recess provides an important mechanical stop. Bore these knob recesses a quarter inch deep at the drill press, centering the counter bore on the radius of the slot's top curve. Another point of note on the front legs are these inch and a half radii curves at the top back corners. They enable the legs to pivot backward for folding up or setting up the chair. But this square corner prevents them from rotating forward. So go ahead and lay these curves out, one for the left leg like this, and one for the right leg like this, and bandsaw them to shape. Now, switch to a 7 8 inch bit and drill a 5 8 inch deep counter bore and a through bolt hole near the top of each leg where the legs will connect to the chair's arms. Then, round over the bottom corners of the legs with 5 8 inch radii, sand all the leg curves smooth, and ease their sharp edges. If you buy Rockler's templates to build this project, you'll get one for drawing these arm shapes. Or, you can lay it out on your own using our gridded drawings in our published plans in Woodworker's Journal magazine. Whichever route you take, saw one arm to shape, and then template route the second arm to match the first. The arms of the chair require two pivot blocks apiece to attach them and to allow for rotation. I've already got this pair shaped, counterboard, and drilled, and now they're all set to cut to final length. I oftentimes find that it's easier and safer to make small parts like these from a longer workpiece to start with. Both pivot blocks for each arm are located along this inside flat edge, but their counterbores face in opposite directions. The rear pivot block's counter bore faces the outside curved edge of the arm, and the front pivot block's counter bore faces inward. Install the pivot blocks on the arms with pairs of 2 inch counterboard exterior screws. Then ease the top sharp edges of both arms with a quarter inch roundover bit. All that's left to do now is bolt the chair together, plug some screw holes, and apply finish. Start by installing carriage bolts, big fender washers, and knobs to attach the backrest to the seat assembly. Then attach an arm to each leg with a carriage bolt, a washer, and a nylon lock nut in the top leg counter bores. Don't over tighten these nuts, just snug them up lightly. You want the parts to rotate freely. Now slip these front leg assemblies onto long carriage bolts here on the back legs and thread on a knob into that recess at the top of the front leg slots. Finally, attach the rear ends of the arms to the backrest with more carriage bolts, washers, and nylon lock nuts. Now go ahead and check the folding action of your new chair. And if it functions properly, it's time to fill all of these screw counter bores with wood plugs so you can move on to finishing. I hope this video encourages you to build a couple of these chairs for your yard. It's a fun project to build, and at the end of the season, they'll be a whole lot easier to store.